Have you always thought it would be nice to work in a job that helps conserve wildlife, but you don't actually know what opportunities are out there? Well, in this video series, I'm going to be talking about 19 jobs that you can do in this field. While I'm specifically going to be talking about jobs you can do based in the UK, a lot of these jobs are actually applicable globally. So wherever you are in the world, I hope you can get something valuable from this video. I've got experience working in a range of wildlife conservation positions, from fully hands-on with animals to completely support roles. All of the clips within this video are from some of my experiences and hopefully will help show some of the variety of work that's out there. In my experience, there's always a job out there to suit somebody, even if it's not what you initially envisioned. This is the second of three videos, and in this video we're taking a look at six jobs that require some niche academic skills. The first job on this list is to become an academic. An academic is someone who works in research and has the goal of publishing the latest scientific discoveries so that the wider community can learn from them. Academics can work in laboratories or out in the field. They can also work from their desks, finding new information from the data that's already been published. Conservation projects really rely on this up-to-date information about the natural world so that they can make the best informed decisions when managing their projects. Becoming an academic means you need to take the path through the school system, earning good enough grades to get onto a bachelor's degree. Even after that, many academics also have masters, PhDs and postdoc experience before landing their academic job. This job is hugely varied depending on which field you're most interested in. You can specialise in subjects like zoology, genetics, geography, microplastics, anatomy, physiology, classification, behaviour, ecology, evolution and conservation. Each area looks at a different aspect of the natural world, but all of them are important in being able to understand how nature works as a whole. We need information from each of these fields to be able to inform conservation projects when they're making planning and adapting decisions. The second job is a data scientist. A data scientist's job is to take all of the data that people in the field have collected and work with it until it actually makes sense. If the academic's job is to ask questions and the field researcher's job is to collect data to answer those questions while the reserve warden is the one making decisions based on those answers, the data scientist acts as the sort of middle ground which is translating the data into the answer. This is a great job for anyone wanting to transition to conservation from a mathematical, computer science or business career because of the demand for experience working with vast quantities of unclean data. However, you can also get into a role like this if you have experience working with data in other fields. My current role is largely data-based and I was able to land this job based on a combination of my experience working with conservation-related data in the past as well as my ability to independently learn new software. If a role working from home or from a desk, working with conservation teams and their data by problem solving to look for answers sounds really good, then this might be the sort of job that's for you. The third job is being a social scientist. Although this is essentially a branch of academia and so could fit within the academic job role, I've given it its own section because it's a really unique way of looking at the world and it's becoming increasingly more needed in the current conservation sector. While conservation in the past has been very species focused, modern conservation is leaning more heavily towards a community based approach. Work now tends to focus on what we can do to help empower local communities to take control of conservation in their own area. If projects are going to have an ethical and a sustainable approach, then it's really important to seek the advice of a social scientist. The role of people within a landscape is only going to be more of a focus in the future of conservation, so if you come from a people-heavy background and want to use your skills to help conservation, then this may be the approach for you. The fourth job is to be a GIS and analytics specialist. While data scientists may need to have GIS and analytical skills, a specific role focusing just on this area tends to be highly desirable for conservation projects. GIS, or a geographic information system, connects data to a map so that we can visualise how data relates to a location. The power of analysing maps lies in the ability to overlay different bits of geographic information. So, for example, you can not only look at where wildlife corridors are, but you can look at how these corridors respond over time to other environmental features like soil quality or rainfall, or even other physical features like human presence. While wildlife and business related degrees sometimes teach GIS skills, it's often geographers who learn the technical skills required to help conservationists. If you have experience working with mapping software like ArcGIS, then this could be the job for you. You'll be able to work with different map data and analyse it to be able to provide advice to conservation teams doing the work on the ground. The fifth job is a policy advisor. In conservation, we can only do work that the law allows us to and only prevent negative impacts on the natural world effectively where there is policy in place supporting us. 
A policy advisor stays up to date with the latest policies and helps change laws in a way that benefits conservation. To become a policy advisor in conservation, you need to be able to demonstrate that you have experience working to interpret or shape policies and also working with a range of different stakeholders. If you've studied for a policy degree, then this could be a good option for you to get into conservation. Although it involves working more with people and papers than nature, a policy advisor is a much needed role that many people will overlook. You're tackling issues right at the top level and change will trickle down from there into all conservation projects as a response. The fifth job is more of a group of jobs, which I'm calling technology consultants. Whether it's working in the field with drones and a GPS tracker, in a lab with centrifuges and microscopes, or at a desk with supercomputers and coding software, conservation projects are always making use of technology. Technology consultants are highly specialised in a specific area of technology and can use this knowledge to help implement new technologies with conservation teams. This can help the teams gather new or more efficient ways of getting data and therefore they can better inform the management of their project. A technology consultant may know the best ways to combine newly developed technologies, such as the best AI systems to pair with their set of camera trap images to reduce workloads. They will also be able to advise on which technology teams can use based on limits such as budgets and time availability. If you have professional experience with a specific type of technology that you think could be really useful to a conservation project, then this could be an avenue to pursue to find your way into the conservation sector. Alternatively, there are all sorts of degrees related to technology and engineering, which can form a pretty good basis for you to be able to work into conservation. With many of the jobs I've talked about, you have the option to specialise even further. You don't just have to work in conservation as a whole. For example, you could be fascinated by the interaction between mammals, like me, and try to take jobs with that as a focus. Maybe marine life or birds are your preferred species to work with. Or perhaps it isn't the conservation of animals that interests you, but plants and landscapes. Maybe it's just one aspect of conservation, like nature-based solutions, that you want to work towards. Wildlife conservation is a really competitive industry and a lot of people have to give up on their dream before they can ever make it happen. But hopefully this video has helped show you the wide variety of jobs that are available out there and given you some hope that if you want to make this your career, there's a way that you can make it happen. Not only that, but a lot of these jobs also have a load of tiers of different experience levels that are required, so you can start out on the very bottom rung and work your way up to your dream position. If you're interested in any sort of video on a specific conservation related job and all the skills that you need to be able to get into that and the path you need to take, then let me know and I can work on that video. If you want to support me in continuing to create these free educational videos, then check out my new Patreon page. I have five different monthly support tiers to choose from, ranging from just £2 up to the higher tiers where you can vote for video topics, have your name credited at the end of each video, receive personalised art of any UK species, and get one-on-one -on -one consultation calls with me on any nature-related topic of your choice. Subscribe to Ferroforest to keep learning about UK nature.